Good day, everybody. This is Jay Garcia of Modus Create. Uh, today, we're going to discuss uh, a very exciting uh, tool that I've written in Shell that um, will help automate some of the uh, issues with deploying uh, Sentinel 2 apps to Android and iOS. So, a lot of us are tasked with the uh, with building a Sentinel 2 app that may even work on the desktop web, or excuse me, the mobile web, and then also packaged in iOS and inside of Android, and without the proper technique or patterns you're going to have to manage three code bases or manage sim links and then there's also other issues like for example there are two different versions of the Cordova JavaScript files there's one for Android and one for iOS you try to load one on uh, like an Android uh, instance of Cordova.javascript into iOS's Cordova instance you're gonna get error conditions and likewise inside of Android you load the iOS uh, Cordova JavaScript into the Android version, um, it's just not going to work as as we'd expect. So we need to figure out how we're going to, to kind of copy that stuff over. So what I did was I created this directory structure where I have my project directory and inside of that I have an Android directory and iOS. Now each of these contain their respective project stuff. Uh, inside of Android, if you're not seen PhoneGap before, you have to put stuff inside of assets slash www. That is per the pattern that they've uh, done in their uh, wiki and um, phonegap.com website and for iOS there's a pattern where there's a www directory in the root of the project directory for um, the Cordova Xcode project. So without having to maintain three different copies we have to figure out how are we going to take from one directory and move over. Now there's a pattern that's been published by Rob Dugan that works very well um, which I actually build up on top of. So if I actually pull his up, uh, Bert Dugan, there we go. Um, he walks you through how to do this with iOS using the Sencha uh, build package. So if I actually scroll down to this, he walks you through the entire process for iOS. It's actually a really awesome blog post. Um, and here we go. So Sencha app build package. Now, what that's going to actually do, if you can see where this mouse cursor is, you're going to see it actually minifies the files. Now, minifying is great when you actually go to production, but when you're actually testing, it's not so great. So the idea is that you have, a, if you have a robust project um, and you need to modify some things to debug, you want something that has the white space and has the indentation. And this this pattern is not going to do it for you. It's going to minify your code, and uh, it just doesn't work as uh, you would need to for development purposes. So we have to fall back to the Sencha app build testing pattern which is relatively easy to implement. So let, let's first go with the automation piece. So if I look at this watcher script, what he's going to do basically is take an MD5 of the directory uh, after an ls is, is done. So if we do an ls slash altr, so if I actually um, quit this real quick, what we're going to see is we have basically a lot of data here. The important part is that we have date timestamps for all these files. So inside of my HTML5 directory actually is my project for this Sentinel 2 app. Now, if I change something, then a single character in this output of ls-altr will actually show that difference. And if we MD5 that, so if I pipe that out to, uh, let's make this a little bit easier to read. Oops, let's try this. So if I, <laughs> let's do this again. There we go. So we actually have an MD5 output here. And that basically is doing an MD5 hash against this file, which basically is the output of the ALTR, LS direct uh, file. Now if I went to modify this, so for example, add a new line, and I reran that entire command, we notice that the MD5 changes. So we know right away that the directory changed. So we can kick off another deploy. And that's precisely what watch.js does, or watch.sh does. Sorry, I'm very excited and I tend to talk a little bit fast. So he's going to execute uh, deploy.sh. And if deploy.sh didn't uh, shit the bed, it's actually going to basically set the MD5 reference to this new MD5 and basically a loop occurs. So half second this entire loop executes. 
Now if we look at deploy.sh, a little bit more uh, complicated, but I'll walk you through it really quickly. So the project I've set up actually does not place builds inside of the HTML5 or the source directory for the Sensitouch 2 app. I like to put it outside for cleanliness sake. Um, and in order to do that using the um, Essentia pattern, you need to modify app.json. And what I did was I just prepended dot dot forward slash to the default build, uh, build paths. So that's pretty much all I did. Now, what he's going to do is basically create these references for me to use later on. And I'm going to execute, uh, I'm going to cd to that HTML5 directory. Now this deploy and watch files actually live in the root of the project, which I actually would, would probably move to scripts moving forward, but for now they live in the root. Now if I look at the, uh, the Sencha app build target, what's going to happen is if I actually were to execute this, cd uh, html5 sentia app build and target by the way is testing so I'll build testing. Now I get this really awesome output which is really cool for me to see but for automation it doesn't work very well. So if I echo dollar uh, question mark we get zero. If we were to do something like um, modify this app.json to include a file that doesn't exist, for example, we're going to get a build error. But if I look at the return code again, it's still zero. So how do we get around that? The answer is actually really simple. If we look at that, uh, that file again, actually it's probably easier if we do it here. Ah, it's not so pretty. It's not colorized. I like color. If we look at this, um, what I have to do is pipe or redirect out the output from the Sencha build process to a file. And then I have to use grep to find a string. If I can find the word error, as you see here, then I know we have an error condition. And grep will actually return uh, a return code of zero. So in bash dollar question is the um, is the return code is a variable for the last re return code of the last um, the last run f uh, command. So if we have a build error, then I can actually um, use this awesome uh, OSA script command to actually show a dialog. This is very experimental. So if I execute deploy.sh, we'd have an exception, and you should see a pop-up dialog. Oh wait, hold on. <laughs> Let's re-invoke that error. There we go. So cool, I have this very, very simple error with Sentia Touch 2 build exception. So this means that I can actually run this in the background and, um, and not have to worry about looking at the command line every time I make a change. So let me pull this back out and let's take a look at deploy.sh one more time. Okay, so if we don't have an error condition, we hit this else block. And what I'm gonna do is remove the stuff from the Android directory, which is here, Android slash assets slash www, as you see up here also. And then I'm just gonna copy from this build target directory, which happens to be testing, the source files. So basically it's going to copy from this build uh, target directory to the Android directory. And it's going to dynamically copy uh, the Cordova, which I've renamed to .android.js, to the root of the Android directory uh, for the www, which is here. Now I include that direct that file automatically, not using the SDK tools, but just manually here. Now it's not minified. I'm okay with that for now because there's no real reason to have to worry about minifying this. It's going to be loading off the file system in your uh, Cordova app. So for here, we do the exact same process for iOS. We remove stuff from the iOS directory, which happens to be relative to the HTML5 directory, one back one, forward to iOS, forward to uh, www. So I'll pull this up. And here we have, also, we copy the source from the build that was just made. And then we copy the iOS version of the Cordova JavaScript over to the root. And that's pretty much it. So if I execute watch.sh, now there's a slight bug in it where it basically will um, 
immediately kick off a build, which at this point I'm okay with because I'm actually uh, still working on this. But every half second he's going to print a dot. This is just a debug thing for me, so I know this thing is working. So what I can do here is I can go to my iOS sim and launch Xcode and hit run. And we should see the app running. Okay, awesome. Now let's just make a simple change. So I'm going to stop this, go into my uh, root or project, and I'm going to modify the view. So if I go to HTML5, app, view, main, I can add to the top of this a top toolbar. Good. Now, notice how this thing automatically kicked off. It found a difference right away. So it does a build, I'm good to go. And I know that this happens really, really quickly on my machine. So I can go back to Xcode, click Run, and there we go, we see our difference. So the question becomes, how do we see this in Android? Well, unfortunately, and, and fortunately, I'm actually running this inside of IntelliJ IDEA but I'm routing the output to the Android device. So we're going to switch to a different video. Um, I apologize ahead of time for the shaky nature of this, but uh, it'll like, make a lot more sense when you see this running. All right, so I'm going to click play of, uh, for this run an Android, and I'm going to focus on the Android device. So we should see the Sensor Touch 2 app appear. I apologize for all the smudges. And there we go. You see the app runs fine. And I can go back here. I can stop the project. I can go make a change. So if I went to the other window and change the text of my top toolbar to something random, we can see that the, the change occurs here in the uh, project automation. He's done. Now I can go back to the Android process or Android IDE and run the project, and we should see the change right away. There we go. Automation for the win. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Hope to uh, to develop this further and get to the point where we're actually, you know, making this something that we can distribute to the masses. Take care.